Well, today you're going to hear about lighthouse history. So I don't know how much uh, anyone here already knows about that. Uh, we're going to start at the very beginning, back in ancient Egypt, in Alexandria, Pharaohs. And it will bring you across Europe, over to the United States, and then from the East Coast, we'll come to the Great Lakes, and finally to Michigan. So you're going to hear an awful lot about lighthouses tonight. <laughs> Some of these are my pictures, and others are old postcards from my collections, or even uh, other old pictures. One of the big questions is, what is a lighthouse? And as you can see, there's a wide variety of different styles. A lighthouse is a saving beacon shining o'er the waters, cutting a path through darkness. A beacon across the night sky, marking a safe harbor. A guide flashing white, red, green, warning danger, danger, rocks, shoals. A sentinel of old saying, you are here. You are safe. I will watch over you. In ancient times, bonfires were lit on hillsides to guide mariners of old safely into harbors at night. Pirates took advantage of this and lured ships to destruction with their own fires. Lanterns were hung from trees or poles to guide ships into safe harbors. Structures were built to raise the fires higher so their light could project farther out to sea. Homer wrote these words in the Iliad in 700 BC. So tonight, wandering sailors, pale with fears, wide o'er the watery waste, a light appears, which on the far-seen mountains, blazing high, streams from a lonely watchtower to the sky. Were these words written to describe sailors searching for the saving beacon even then? Two of the seven wonders of the ancient world were lighthouses. The Pharos was from around 285 BC and stood on the island of Pharos that was at the entrance to the harbor serving Alexandria. They are not sure its exact location, but the Quake Bay Fort is said to have been constructed from and on its ruins. The main tower of the fort was completed in 1480 using stone and marble from the lighthouse. The huge red granite pillars in the northwest section are believed to have come from the Pharos. Rubble from the old lighthouse lay in the waters nearby. And you can see where the red marks are on there. That's where they found what they think is part of the Pharos. The Pharaoh's lighthouse stood over 440 feet tall, with a great open fire burning in its tower. Ancient writers left few detailed descriptions of the tower, contributing to the many depictions. These are second century coins from Alexandria showing the Pharaoh's lighthouse. In the almost 1,500 years of service, a large number of earthquakes took a toll on it in later years. In A.D. 796, the upper story was lost to an earthquake. In 1275, Sultan Saladin ordered some restoration work done. Finally, in 1302, the pharaoh stood in ruins, which is depicted in this mosaic from Libya. The pharaoh was the last of the six vanished ancient wonders to disappear. In 1994, French and Egyptian archaeologists excavated remains they believe are from the pharaohs lying at the bottom of the harbor. Many stone pieces and statues were found. Some pieces, like this Colossus statue of Ptolemy II, were raised and exhibited on land. There were also obelisks and sphinxes found. The debate goes on as to whether these are remnants of the ancient lighthouse or debris from other ancient structures that may have been dumped into this location. Another of the seven wonders of the ancient world is the Colossus of Rhodes, and it was thought to be a lighthouse. It took the Rodinian sculpture Shars of Lindos 12 years to build the 110-foot bronze statue 
with a 50-foot pedestal, completing it in 282 BC. It was constructed of bronze plates over an iron frame, which were steadied with large masses of rock while being erected. A great fire supposedly was put there by the Greek sun god Helios and burned in the statue's hand or eyes. Its purpose was to mark the entrance to the Mandrake Harbor of the ancient city of Rhodes. However, there is evidence that the Colossus may have been located on a hilltop overlooking the harbor, where the medieval port palace of uh, Grand Master of the Knights of Rhodes was built in 1309. The statue is usually depicted straddling the entrance to the harbor, but no ancient accounts mention this pose, and it would have been very difficult to construct this way. The Colossus may actually have been straight-legged. An earthquake in 226 BC caused severe damage to the city and broke the Colossus' knees. The great statue lay broken in huge pieces. Arab invaders conquered roads and broke the remnants of the statue into smaller pieces, selling them to a Jew from Syria in 654 AD. Legend says it took 900 camels to carry it away. This is a modern replica of its head. The Colossus was almost the same size as our own Statue of Liberty, which, by the way, is also a lighthouse. This is what the harbor of uh, Rhodes looks like today and where the Colossus is said to have stood. The pillars at the entrance are about the same size as the Colossus. Now, this is another old uh, lighthouse. The graffiti is all that is left of an ancient lighthouse of gates built in Phoenicia by Hercules. The lighthouse was crowned by a statue of great dimensions and destroyed in 1146. In Turkey, during archaeological excavations performed at the ancient city of Patera in Lystra, ruins of a lighthouse built on a rock in 64 and 65 AD were found under mounds of sand in 2003. This is probably the oldest such structure that has remained intact. The 20 millimeter high lighthouse was built under the reign of Emperor Nero. The lighthouse may have been destroyed by a tsunami that hit the city in ancient times, but it appears that only the lighthouse suffered damages. In the doorway of the tower, the body of the light keeper was found under stone blocks. There may have been a second lighthouse at the outer edge of the port. It is now a national park. In the second century BC, the Turris Siponis was built where the lighthouse of Chiponia in Spain currently stands. It was built with the purpose of keeping ships from running aground at the reefs. The La Corona Lighthouse of Spain was built on the northwest coast during the reign of Trajan from 98 to 117 AD. First records of it appeared in 415 AD. There is speculation that there may have been a Phoenician tower on this site earlier. The light was active during the 4th and 5th century AD and then abandoned by the Romans. It is a square stone tower with the upper part oct octagonal and originally had two glaciers. It is also known as the Tower of Hercules and is the oldest working lighthouse in the world and the only Roman lighthouse in working order. We now travel to France, and in AD 39, a lighthouse was erected by the Roman Emperor Guéguila on the French side of the Dover Straits of Boulogne to commemorate an imaginary battle. It became known as Tour d'Ordre. The structure was an octagonal shaft 124 feet in height with a fire for a light. The tower was located on the sheer French cliffs by the mouth of the River Lane. The light was destroyed in 1644 when the cliff on which it stood collapsed into the sea. The remains were visible until 1930. 
It is noted for having the most doors of any White House. 96. It's a lot of doors. <laughs> Across the English Channel in Kent, on the sheer white cliffs of Dover, a companion lighthouse was built at Dover Castle in 90 AD by the Roman Emperor, Emperor Quigla, and modeled after the one at Boulogne, marking the mouth of the port. Originally, the Romans built the tower at 43 feet, but during the reign of Henry VIII, it was raised to 62 feet. Later, it was adapted for use as a bell tower for the adjacent castle church of St. Mary de Castro. This is what the inside of it looks like. It is the oldest lighthouse in the United Kingdom. A second lighthouse was built to the west and called Brandon Stone or Devil's Drop of Mortar after the nearby lost village of Brandon. It was covered with 18th century building work and rediscovered in fresh works in the 1860s. Lighthouses remained in use during the Middle Ages, but few were built until 1100 when trade was revived. We'll now move to Italy. The Lanterna di Genoa was first established around 1139. It was 384 feet above water at the western end of the port of Genoa on the Mediterranean Sea. English sailors called it the Old Man of Berlin. Antonio Colombo, Christopher Columbus's uncle, served as its keeper in 1449. The lighthouse was damaged by military activities and taken down. It was replaced in 1543, building a 200-foot tower with 375 steps to the top at the same site. The light is not currently active, but it is the pride of Italy. During the 16th and 17th 17th centuries, Atlantic trade expanded, touching off a wave of lighthouse construction in France, England, and the Low Countries. By 1800, there stood more than 200 major lighthouses in Western Europe. These both were a couple lighthouses that are in France. A light was exhibited at North Portland in the British Isles in 1499, but the first real lighthouse was built by Sir John Meldrum in 1636 a two-story octagonal tower with an iron pole burning grate on top. It was destroyed by fire in 1683. A new lighthouse was built in 1691 site the old tower. It is 85 feet in height and was whitewashed. In 1890, a separate room known as the Lantern House was built at the top of the tower to accommodate the light. This one was automated in 1998. Now the most famous lighthouse in England is the Eddystone, and this is the first one, which was an octagonal wooden tower designed by Henry Wynne Stanley and first lit in 1698. It was the first lighthouse anywhere to be built on an exposed rock in an open ocean. By 1699, the tower was badly in need of repair and was changed to a 12-sided tower with a stone-clad exterior on a timber frame. When Stanley's tower was destroyed by the great storm in November of 1703, along with its keepers and a repair crew. Five different towers were built on the rocks at Eddystone. The third, Rudyard's Tower, was a conical wooden structure around a core of brick and concrete. A temporary light first shown in 1706, and the work was completed in 1709. On December 2nd, 1755, the top of the lantern caught fire, probably from a spark from the illuminating candles. The three keepers tried to put out the flames, but had to be rescued from the rocks. Henry Hall, known as the oldest keeper, while trying to keep out, put out the blaze, swallowed nearly half a pound of molten lead from the lantern group and died 12 days later of lead poisoning at the age of 94. A piece of this lead is in the collections of the National Museum of Scotland. The fourth tower was built of granite rocks and modeled after an oak tree. It was first lit in 1759. By 1877, erosion caused cracks in the rocks beneath the tower, and the lighthouse would shake from side to side when hit by large waves. And that's the one with the red and white stripes. A new structure was built in 1882, 
and the old light was dismantled stone by stone and moved to Plymouth, where it stands today. The current tower was first lit in 1882. The stump you see next to the current tower is from the third tower. <coughs> the current eddy stone is at a height of 161 feet and was automated in 1982. A helipad was added above the lantern. It is now monitored and controlled from Trinity House operations. In the Scottish Isles, you have Canard Head, which was in operation from 1787 until 1991. In Gaelic, the name means at the head of the point of land. It was built on the North Sea on Scotland's northeast shoulder. The 16th century castle was altered in 1787 to take the first lighthouse built by the Commonwealth of the Northern Lighthouse and used uh, one of the old castle towers. In 1791, flames from the ashes came from the lamp in the lantern room and entered a window of the keeper's house, killing the keeper, his wife, and five of his eight children while they all slept. So being a lighthouse keeper was a dangerous profession. In 1814, it was gutted and refitted. Structures around the tower were torn down. We'll now travel to Europe. And this is the Europa Point Lighthouse, which stands at the southernmost point of Gibraltar, situated at the gateway between the Atlantic and the Mediterranean. The lighthouse was built in 1838 and 1841. It was fully automated in February 1994. One of the oldest lights in Northern Europe was established in 1656 near Mandel, Norway. Lindesnes Lighthouse is 165 feet above the sea in the southernmost point of Norway. The original fire beacon was built in 1822. A replica of the original fire beacon was constructed in 2006. In 1915, a steel tower was built that is used today. It is painted white with a bright red lantern. In Turkey, no date confirms when the first tower was built where the Phosphorus River meets the Sea of Mamara, coming from the Black Sea. Istanbul sits on a peninsula at its southern entrance. This is the earliest known image of Maiden's Tower, possibly built in 1110. Maiden the Conqueror added a minaret to the tower in 1453. The tower did triple duty as a lighthouse, customs house, and prison. The word minaret comes from the Arabic minera, meaning lighthouse. In the 1980s, the beacon was moved to the small pyramidal concrete tower next to the old tower. And you see that on the right hand side there on the small island. It is now known as Kiskaleski, and it underwent a massive restoration in 2000, opening as a restaurant and museum. We will now bring lighthouses across the ocean to our own shores. The first lighthouse lit in the United States was at Boston Harbor on Little Brewster Island on September 14, 1716. The original lighthouse was built of stone. Prior to this structure, colonists guided ships with bonfires and lanterns. The first fog signal in the world was placed into service here in 1719. British redcoats blew up the lighthouse in June of 1776 as they retreated from Boston. A new tower was built by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts in 1783 using parts of the base from the original structure as a foundation. It was originally a 75-foot conical tower with a black cast iron lantern 15 feet high. In 1856, the height of the tower was raised to 89 feet to accommodate a second-order frame nail lens, which is still used. The duplex keeper's house was also added. It was the last U.S. lighthouse to be automated in 1998. It is also the last manned lighthouse in our country with a civilian resident keeper and Coast Guard Auxiliary Volunteer watch standards. This is Sandy Hook, New Jersey's lighthouse tower, which was first lit in 1764. 
It was originally called the New York Lighthouse as its primary purpose was to guide vessels into New York Harbor. The 85-foot tower is octagonal with walls seven feet thick. In 1776, the British took control of the lighthouse during the Revolutionary War. American cannons fired on it, damaging the tower. In 1857, Sandy Hook underwent a major refurbishing. The present keeper's double frame dwelling was built in 1883, and the old one was raised. In 1889, Sandy Hook became the first U.S. lighthouse to be lit by electric incandescent lamps. In 1996, ownership of the lighthouse was transferred from the U.S. Coast Guard to the National Park Service. Sandy Hook is the only colonial lighthouse to survive essentially unchanged and the oldest standing lighthouse in the United States. It is still active today. Grant Point Light in Nantucket, Massachusetts is America's second oldest light station, originally built in 1746. A total of nine different lighthouse structures stood here over the years, not including a bonfire on a hogshead barrel that is said to have been used as early as 1700. In 1856, the station was rebuilt with a 47-foot tower along with a new keeper's house. The tower received a fourth-order frame nail lens. In 1856, the tower still stands west of the present range lights but it's minus its lantern room. The current Grand Point light was built in 1901 and is 596 feet east of the previous one. The light was automated in 1965. In 1850, Sankety Head Light in Massachusetts was built on a 90-foot bluff on the east coast of Nantucket. The 60-foot tower was raised 10 feet in 1888. It received a second-order Fresnel lens, becoming known as New England's most powerful light, reportedly seen as far as 40 miles away. Sankety Headlight was Massachusetts' first and the first lighthouse anywhere in the United States with a Fresnel lens as part of its original <coughs> The light was automated in 1965, but Coast Guard personnel continued to live there until 1992. It is still at an active age navigation, but the house and the other buildings have been torn down. Tall ships and schooners made their way down the waterways. Commerce expanded into new areas. Proposed in 1808 and completed in 1825, the Erie Canal links the waters of Lake Erie in the west to the Hudson River in the east. An engineering marvel when it was built, some called it the eighth wonder of the world. Industry and commerce could now expand into the Great Lakes, and ships such as these from Sail Detroit 2001 made their way down the waterways to the Great Lakes. The need existed to build more lighthouses to guide them. Next lighthouses expand into Lake Ontario and Lake Erie. In 1781, the British placed a beacon on the roof of the French 1726 building within the fort called the Castle. This is at Fort Niagara. It was the first unofficial lighthouse on the Great Lakes. The light shone from inside the fort until 1803. A second wooden tower housing a pedestal and lamp shone from atop the French castle from 1823 to 1872. This is as uh, that building looks today at Fort Niagara. The current tower was built in 1872. The tower was raised to a height of 61 feet in 1900. Increasingly obscured by trees, it was deactivated and replaced in 1993 by a modern beacon. That means a pole with a light on top. The lighthouse stands just outside the gates of old Fort Niagara State Park. A 20-foot tower originally known as the Presque Isle Light Station was built in 1818, overlooking the harbor of Erie, Pennsylvania, tying it with Buffalo at the first lights on Lake Erie. By 1857, the tower had sank so badly from quicksand that it had to be torn down. A second tower was built in 1858, which was a 56-foot brick tower. 
which also sank as it was built on the same spot lasting eight years. They didn't learn anything. In 1867, a new 49-foot conical unpainted sandstone tower was built on a different spot and still stands today. Amazing. In 1870, the name was changed to Erie Light Station, or Erie Land, when plans for the new lighthouse on the peninsula were underway. Erie Land was deactivated in 1880. The new 40-foot tall brick tower was built in 1873 on the Presque Isle Peninsula, taking the name of Presque Isle Light Station. The tower was raised to 57 feet in 1896, and is the home of the park manager. Marblehead, Ohio was built in 1821 and originally called the Sandusky Bay Light until 1870. Oldest continuously operating lighthouses is the oldest continuously operating lighthouse on the Great Lakes. It's a 65 foot white conical limestone tower with red trim and a red lantern and was automated in 1985. Two lights were constructed of rough hewn stone and erected on a bluff overlooking the mouth of the Genesee River in the port of Rochester, New York in 1822. The lighthouse remaining is now known as the Charlotte Genesee and is the second oldest lighthouse on the Great Lakes. The keeper's house was rebuilt in 1863. The light was put out of service in 1881, but the lighthouse service personnel lived there until 1940. Eight more lights went into service between 1825 and 1830. The first tower at Big Zadis Bay was a 40-foot tall conical stone tower and a one-and-a-half story dwelling built in 1825. After the Civil War in 1868, the original structures fell into disrepair. In 1871, a 45-foot limestone tower attached to the side of the house was built and the old ones were demolished. Old Sodus was decommissioned in 1901 when the pier head light was considered to be enough. But the keeper for the old outer pier or for the new outer pier light lived in the house. In 1834, the first piers were erected at the entrance to the bay and a beacon placed at the end. This beacon was replaced in 1858, and this is the range lights. A permanent wooden tower was installed in 1870. In 1901, a white 45-foot replacement tower was built at the end of a long, narrow pier. This light is known as the Sodus Point Pierhead Light or Sodus Outer Light. The original Grand River or Fairport Light was built in 1825 on the shores of Fairport Harbor, Ohio. It was rebuilt in 1854 and used until 1869. In 1871, a 69-foot area sandstone tower and keeper's house were completed on a low rise near the shore. The light was deactivated in 1925, when replaced by a new lighthouse on the west breakwater. The first light, a 59-foot stone tower, was built at Tibbetts Point, New York in 1827 to mark the place where Lake Ontario meets St. Lawrence River. This light became inefficient and neglected, causing it to be replaced in 1854 by a 69-foot brick and stucco conical tower. A fourth-order Fresnel lens was installed in the lantern room and is the only working Fresnel lens remaining on Lake Ontario. The station was automated in 1981 and is an active light station. It's also a youth hostel where you can stay. The original light was built in 1828 at the mouth of the Buffalo River along Lake Erie Shores at Buffalo, New York. It was a 30-foot tall stone tower and was one of the first two lighthouses on Lake Erie. In 1833, it was replaced by an 80-foot tower at the end of a pier. It was decommissioned in 1914 after a series of new lights were built beginning in 1872. A 40-foot tower and house were built at Barcelona, New York in 1829 in response to increased traffic on the Erie Canal. 
It is the oldest tower still standing on the Great Lakes, also known as the Portland Harbor Light. This was the only lighthouse in the world ever to be fueled by its own natural gas deposit and was extinguished in 1859. It is a private residence. The building of the Welland Canal in 19, I mean 1829 between Lake Erie and Lake Ontario opened navigation to the lower lakes. This is the first canal and the second canal from 1845. Third canal. And this is currently ships entering the Welland Canal from Lake Ontario, as it would look today. Next, lighthouses moved on to Lake Huron. Fort Ratchet was the first light constructed on the shores of Michigan in 1825. This is the current lighthouse, but the original keeper's house. Was a, the original light was located at the mouth of the St. Clair River, near where the Thomas Edison Inn is today. It was barely visible until boats were too near. The tower collapsed into the river in the late, 19, uh, in the late November 1829, eight, rather, eight. In 1829, a new red brick tower was built on the shores of Lake Huron at the mouth of the St. Clair River. Originally, the tower was 74 feet high. In 1861, the height was increased to 86 feet. In 1874, after the original keeper's dwelling burned, a brick duplex was added. In 1933, it was automated. The Boys Blank Island Lighthouse was the second constructed on Lake Huron. The original tower was built in 1829 and collapsed in 1837 and was rebuilt in 1839. The current lighthouse was built in 1867 and decommissioned in 1924. Thunder Bay Island's original light tower was built in 1831. It disintegrated and was rebuilt in 1832. The old Presqu'ile light was built in 1840 and decommissioned by the new Presqu'ile light in 1871. On Lake Michigan, you had the St. Joseph Pierhead Lights, Wauguchans, which was built in 1851 and abandoned in 1912. The first light station in Saugatuck was established in 1839 at the mouth of the Kalamazoo River. In 1859, a new lighthouse was built and was decommissioned in 1914. It was later purchased as a private, uh, by a private family and used as a vacation home. On April 3, 1959, a tornado destroyed the lighthouse. There is now a private cottage that sits on the bluff overlooking Lake Michigan. Grand Haven South Pier Head Lights were built in 1839 and 1905. South Manitou, 1839-1872-1958. A total of 43 lights were in operation in 1840, including Lake Huron Score, 17 on Lake Erie, 11 on Lake Michigan, and 9 on Lake Ontario. Lake Sinclair and the Detroit River received one each. The Lighthouse Establishment added 33 new lights on the Great Lakes from 1841 to 1852, Lake Michigan gaining 16. There's Skilligalee Island, also known as Isle of the Lakes. Uh, that was 1850, 1868, and 1888. Muskegon South Pierhead, 1851 and 1903 to present. Old Bailey's Harbor, 1852 and 1869. Grand Travers or Cat's Head Point, 1852 and 1858 to 1972. Beaverhead on Beaver Island, 1852 to 1962. St. James River on Beaver Island Harbor, 1852 and 1870 to present day. Lake Superior received six lights. This is the old Detour Reef light, which was at the mouth of the St. Mary's River and built in 1847 and then 1931 to present, which was this light. Whitefish Point, originally built in 1849 and 1860 to present day. Copper Harbor was completed in 1849, then there was 1866 to 1933, 
and the 1933 was a, the skeletal one that you see right behind the old lighthouse. Manitou Island, 1850, and then 18, uh, 1961 to present, and 1961 is the uh, modern beacon. Eagle Harbor, 1851 and 1871 to present. Ontonagon, 1852, rebuilt in 1866 to 1964. On Lake Huron, you had the Saginaw River Range Lights from 1841 and then 1876 to 1960. Point Out Barks, 1848 and 1857 to present. Sheboygan, Maine, 1851 and 1859 to 1930. And Detroit River, we had Grassy Island South Channel. And there was a couple of different ones there. There was the Greer and the Front Range. The Monroe Pierhead. Mama Judah Island, and there was a couple of those. The Great Lakes had a total of 76 operating lighthouses in 1852. 331 were operated by the Lighthouse Establishment nationally. In 1855, the first of the Sault Ste. Marie locks were built, opening Lake Superior to shipping. When offshore reefs and shoals pose danger, light ships, like this light ship Ambrose, but the Ambrose was actually on uh, the Atlantic Ocean, they served to mark the area first before the lighthouse was built. They were floating lighthouses anchored in areas where building a lighthouse was very difficult. The light was located on the top of the mass. And a fog signal would sound when the conditions warranted. Later, usually, a lighthouse was built on underground cribs. Lightships practically disappeared by the Second World War. By 1940, only one remained on the Great Lakes, and that's the lightship Huron. <coughs> the Huron was commissioned in 1921, was stationed at Corsica Shoals, six miles north of the Blue Water Bridge from 1897 until <coughs> it was commissioned in 1970. From 1941 to 1970, the Huron was the only American lightship on the Great Lakes, and from 1945, the only lightship in service for the Black Hall. She also had a nickname. She was called the old B.O., which was the sound of her fog signal. Several lighthouses that marked shoals and reefs were originally marked by lightships. The Wogashan Shoal, White Shoal, these are both on Lake Michigan, Graysley Reef on uh, Lake Huron, and Poe Reef, also Lake Huron. and Martin Reef. Lighthouses have a crumbling history. Automated lights, automatic bulb changers, automatic timing mechanisms and sensors, and remote control activation of electric fog signals made most manned lighthouses rendered obsolete. Electronic aid select navigation with radar, satellites, and GPS systems reduced the need for lighthouses and began the end of this era. Development of the radio as a major element in the lake's navigation system began the Bureau of Lighthouses' long process of eliminating lighthouses. Lightships were eliminated and all but disappeared by the end of World War II. Life-saving stations were also abandoned and left to decay. Some of the old towers are still barely standing. This is old standby or Minnesota Point Light at Duluth and Lake Superior. Turtle Island Light on Lake Erie at Toledo. Bob Island Light on Bob Island at Amherstburg in the Detroit River. Old Grassy Island Range Lights near Ecorse and also in the Detroit River. Horseshoe Reef at Buffalo in Lake Erie. While others have simply disappeared like the old Sandusky Harbor on Lake Erie, a Sabo Pier in Oscoda, Lake Huron, Old Windmill Point, Gross Point Light, Detroit River, Old Belle Isle Lighthouse on the Detroit River, Mama Judah Island, also Detroit River, Grassy Island, Detroit River, Calumet Harbor, Lake Superior, 
Monroe Lighthouse, mouth of the Raisin River, Lake Erie. They are a tribute to a bygone day and era. Will they remain to remind future generations of our past? Once I watched ships that passed my way, pointing to safe harbor or marking a dangerous shoal. Now I stand, old, forgotten, and crumbling. Someday the last of my bricks and mortar will fall. Will anyone remember that I once existed? I once was important. I was a lighthouse. And that ends our journey through the lighthouse history. <laughs> 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 well, you're not as old as those. <laughs>